So, Greg, um, I'm John from uh, Pedal Magazine, and it's a real honor to uh, to be talking to you. Like that magazine. Very good. Um, yeah, just to say that. Uh, I don't know, for me at any rate, looking back at some of these old videos from like 89, the Tour de France and whatnot, I still find it so exciting to watch the suspense, you know, the eight second margin, races like that. Um, I'm just wondering, like, at the time, did you realize, like, how powerful this was and how much of a legacy we're creating for the sport? No, I, no, I, I mean, no. <laughs> no, but I don't know if I did. I, I think the sport was... Um, in the growth phase, but no, I mean, it was, for me, it was just, you know, a dream to go over there and race in the Tour de France, and by, by 89, I'd, I'd been, been there, but um, that victory just personally was, was for me, it was, uh, um, you know, two years before I almost died, yeah, six weeks before I almost quit the sport, and then I won it, it's, sad part, that's, that's, you, you, you want that all the time then, <laughs> yeah. but it was great, no, it's, it was great, it was great to be in the evolving part of cycling where, you know, we had air, we had these deep dish tire wheels, just like you see today. In '82, we had aero foil shaped um, mm -hmm. bar stems. Back in the early '80s, and then to get into the disc wheels, and so it'd be, it's really exciting to be in that period of real dramatic change of of, of technology. I went from heart rate monitor to the end of my career racing with power uh, power meter. So it was that was the exciting part for me. Okay, uh, I'm just wondering, what do you consider to be your your greatest moment in the sport? Well, I mean, defining moment. You know, it's like every year for me was a goal, yeah. and I and, and and every year that I raced, I, I achieved what I set out to achieve. So, like my first year, when I was third in Dauphiné Libre, that for me that was like at 19 years old, behind you know, that's a pre that was the pre-race for the tour. Boom, that that gave me the confidence that I'm capable of doing well on the tour. It was a re reaffirming deal. The next year, I was second in the world's won the Tour de Lavenir by 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Boom, that was a highlight. World Championships the following year and the overall series. That, But I'd say 83 was the defining period for me, winning World Championships. Then, uh, actually, the Tour de France, my first year, I was third. I was disappointed. And uh, it, then 86 would be the second milestone for me. 86. Yeah. Okay. Because it was, I won, I won against the Tour de France against a very good Hino, which is one of the best all-time yeah. cyclists. And um, it was not a gift. It was a, uh, it was a race against him, so... Was, that to me was my 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 periods. Okay, uh, I'm also wondering, uh, Greg. You've been fairly outspoken about various things going on in the cycling world in the past few years. I don't think you stand any monetary gain by some of the criticisms that you're making, and I'm just wondering what's the rationale behind the criticisms that you're making about what's going on in, in top level cycling right now. Well, the rationale is that. Um, there's you know, nobody's looking at the backside of what's happening in the sport. I mean, there's in the in the 90s, a couple hundred people died. I knew two two bench that died, um, and it's, it's people who cheat are cheating others who aren't willing to cheat. That's point blank. It's cheating, but there's a, there was an amount of corruption. I think it's cleaning up a lot. I think I see. I look at power output watts and come down a lot, which means uh, to me that's the best indicator of, of ongoing team doping. I think the sport is really, like this weekend, it's really about this type of event to me. Even the tour, where they have late tap to tour, that's cycling too. I mean, it's it's a combination. You know, sports, people are competitive. There's always going to be people taking shortcuts. But the biggest deal for me was it was organized by teams. It was not giving riders a, a, a chance. To, to They gave them no chance, no option to not do it. If you're, if you're at one point in the pro peloton, if you weren't doing it, you, weren't, you didn't have a job. So I just hate to, I just envisioned myself or my son getting into the pro sport. That would have been that I would have hated to have be be put in that situation. Okay. Uh, d yeah, I, I'm just uh, wondering. Uh, one of your former cycling friends, uh, Steve Bauer, yeah. he's uh, getting a lot of news these days in Canada with his Spider Tech team. Uh, knowing a little bit about uh, Steve's determination, where do you think he's going to end up going with that team? Steve? Oh, we'll probably go to the tour. Why not? Oh yeah. Yeah, Steve. Why wouldn't he? Because <laughs> he went to the tour. I mean, he was in '85. He came with with me and Lobby Claire. And he got tenth. Now Steve's a good, well, very clear thinking, and he's he's determined. If he's decided to get into it, I'm, he, he's a he'd be a great coach. He'd be a great manager too of the team. No, I I, I hope he gets to the tour. <laughs> okay, very good. All right. I'm sorry.